Hi. Hi. Come on in. All right. Well, let me take a look. I heard the baby's growing fine. Yeah, it seems that way. We'll keep an eye on that. Marissa and Ben O'Donnell found out their fetus had Down syndrome just a few months into her pregnancy. How is the shape of the baby's head? We feel like we've heard Down syndrome kids have a more... A little bit of a rounder rounder. head. Yeah, it looks a little bit rounder. Just kind of looking at it. I don't know that you'll notice a big difference, though. Sure. Sure. I mean, it's mostly kind of like this egg shape here. Maybe it might be a little bit longer front to back. Mm. But if I didn't know, it wouldn't really be striking me. Sure, okay. Initially, my reaction was... Why is this happening to us? We, it, it's taken us so long to get pregnant, and now we have this complication. Typically, a lot of Down syndrome babies right after birth have some sort of heart issue. And then once baby's here, you know, there are a lot of different considerations from respiratory um, to GI, gastrointestinal challenges, auditory, um, vision screenings. Down syndrome is a spectrum too. So uh, every kid is different and some might not have as many challenges and others have a lot more. So uh, you just don't know that until the kid's here and you go through it. I know this is a tough question to ask and to answer, but did you ever think about ending the pregnancy? In a moment like that, you go through mentally many dark hallways. For me, I didn't get so far down that hallway to a place of where I felt like I didn't think that we could handle it, but I did sort of fall into a deep place of feeling like my life would be so different I'll admit, for the first couple of days, there was a part of me that I think thought, all right, I think I could convince Marissa that maybe this isn't a good idea. And yeah, I I probably felt that way for a few days. But the longer we went on and the more experience we had, I very quickly was like, no, that's not, you know, that's not the right move for us. There are many families like the O'Donnells whose ability to make that choice is under threat. Since 2013, legislators in eight states have banned abortions if someone wants one because of a genetic anomaly like Down syndrome. Half of those bans were passed in 2019 alone. Proponents argue the bans protect people with disabilities against discrimination. I mean, what other qualities or genetic well, abnormalities which we all coming. have? Don't you like? And remember, no. What if you, you can, screen for cancer? You know, I had breast cancer. You right? screen for cancer? Oh, no, we don't want well, that one. Well, you can screen for eye color. You can screen for sex. You can screen for hair color. What if you don't like those attributes of a child? But critics say laws shouldn't regulate a woman's reasons for ending her pregnancy, and that the anti-abortion movement is trying to exploit some people's discomfort with the idea of aborting a fetus because of a disability. How do you feel about those laws? Every situation is different. Um, Every person is in a different circumstance than someone else. And so um, just a blanket, this has to happen in every single circumstance is is tough for me to swallow. I think that the people who are pushing these laws have an agenda that is beyond the Down syndrome community. um, And I think are working towards accomplishing um, sort of their end result. Court battles have blocked all but one of the bans from taking effect, but that's kind of the point. If a so-called reasons ban gets in front of the Supreme Court, the conservative justices could use it to weaken or even overturn Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion nationwide. And at least one justice has signaled that he supports these kinds of bans. In a recent opinion, Clarence Thomas said these laws help prevent abortion from becoming, quote, a tool of modern-day eugenics. Over the last decade, prenatal screening for things like Down syndrome has exploded. And people do choose to end their pregnancies. One study estimated that in 2013, there were 31% fewer babies born with Down syndrome than expected in the U.S. population due to abortions. One of the biggest battlegrounds in this fight is Missouri, where Down syndrome was included in the state's sweeping 2019 abortion ban. This still includes the prohibition of selective and discriminatory abortions where a child is being killed simply because it's sex, race, or having Down syndrome. This legislation has one goal, and that goal is to save lives. We don't necessarily want a child dying in the womb simply because uh, they have a disability. Brian Westbrook is the executive director of Coalition for Life St. Louis, which opposes abortion and supports the ban. We believe that a woman 
knows that there's a living human child inside of them, uh, inside the womb. And so, of course, they feel compelled by most likely outside forces, whether it be a diagnosis uh, for Down syndrome or whether it be some other type of uh, pressures outside of their life uh, that really are making them feel that they need to get the abortion. What if a woman just says she doesn't want to have a kid? Guess what? There are hundreds, if not thousands, of couples out there who would love to be able to adopt that child. What and if she doesn't want to be pregnant? Well, at that point, she is pregnant. And so I think it's really important for us, uh, for he her to realize uh, exactly what that choice is going to entail. Missouri has just one abortion clinic left. For a month last year, it had to obey the state's reasons ban before it was blocked by a judge. Some women had to leave the state to get abortions. All babies are special. So we're here across the river in Illinois at an abortion clinic that sees a lot of patients from Missouri. We're here to talk to a doctor who's done the procedure on women who left the state after they'd gotten a diagnosis of Down syndrome and needed to avoid that state's ban on the procedure. I am not on the list. I'm a reporter. A reporter? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, you can go ahead and well, and you just keep my ID? No, sir. Thank you. So during that few weeks when that Missouri ban was in effect, how did that impact you? Did you see patients who'd been affected by it? We did. What was that like? We saw the, the day the ban went into effect, I saw a patient who had actually been planning on um, having an induced abortion in Missouri, and the ban went into effect, and so she changed her appointment to come and see us. And it was heartbreaking. I mean, we had, she was, had already gone through so much testing, so many ultrasounds. Her uh, baby had a major cardiac defect along with the diagnosis of Down syndrome. And then literally that day that she was supposed to go to see a provider in Missouri, they had to call her and say, I'm so sorry, we can't see you. To see the added stress that that caused that patient in one of the probably worst days of their lives already, it makes you feel pretty bad about medicine. That we have to answer to legislators that we think are doing the wrong thing, but we have to do what they say because they're literally like, you're gonna go to jail if you don't. Down syndrome advocacy groups have largely tried to stay out of the debate, but the anti-abortion movement was galvanized after a 2017 CBS report on Iceland. At the time of the report, almost 100% of Icelandic women who got prenatal screening chose to end their pregnancies after they learned their fetus had Down syndrome. This is a country of about 350,000. It has now almost completely eliminated Down syndrome births since the test began in the early 2000s. I saw a promo for a news show, and it said, Iceland eradicates Down syndrome. An interesting title for someone who is a parent of someone with Down syndrome. After watching the CBS report, Missouri mother Mary Suzanne Crockett and her daughter Lily, who has Down syndrome, traveled to Iceland to talk to people about the high termination rate. We went to the Black Sand Beach, then we went touring to the Ice Cave. The Ice Cave. And there you are going off a clear ice, ice. cliff. Cliff. <laughs> super scary. It was super scary. So we had these great adventures, mm -hmm. and then it was time to do what we had come to do. We went to the hospital, and on the way there, Lily said, well, why are we doing this? And I said, well, we're going to go talk to this lady who talks to parents who are having a baby with a special diagnosis. And she said, well, can you die from a special diagnosis? And so I said, yes, Lily, in this case, you can die. Uh, and so all of these children who are testing positive for Down syndrome, their families are choosing to terminate. And so that is why we are going. And Lily burst into tears. And so I had to pull over and I got in the back seat and just held her. And I said, I know this is hard, but who better than you to explain about the value of your life? Will you do this? And so Lily said, but all of those babies are dead. And I said, but more are always coming. And if we can shine some light of truth and uh, encouragement, then it will be worth it, even if it's for one. And so uh, 
stopped. Okay. So here we are standing in front of the hospital. What did you think I like when you it. heard that? Well, when you heard. Oh, yeah, I heard it, yeah. You were really sad, weren't you? Yeah, so I was really sobbing. You were sobbing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the bits for dad. The Crockett's met with a prominent genetic counselor in Iceland. They were even profiled in a national newspaper article. Did you see what you were doing there as a kind of protest? I saw it as a wake-up call. Do you think what Iceland is doing amounts to eugenics? When you have a group of people who are being tested, it's the only test that I know of that is strictly for the purpose of deciding life or death. You see getting a prenatal testing of Down syndrome to be about whether or not someone's going to continue the pregnancy? Well, there, the typical result of that test is, are you going to keep this child or not? In recent years, non-invasive prenatal screenings for Down syndrome have become more widely available. So more would-be parents are grappling with a diagnosis they otherwise would have learned after giving birth. And as the abortion wars intensify, what people do with that information will only become more politicized. Would you say that you're generally pro-life? I would say that I am generally pro-life. What do you think the law should be in this case? I really do not focus on what the law should be. I am gravely concerned that people who I have seen and experienced to be a gift to our society are endangered. The legislature opposes abortion and wants to chip away at it. And they're using this argument around disability rights incorrectly. And they've taken um, it way out of context. Our pregnancy is our pregnancy, and it's our situation. Um, and we made a decision that was right for us with our circumstance. We're lucky enough to live in a state that allows us to make that decision. And so I, I certainly feel for other people that don't. <laughs> 